Welcome back, my name is Guy, and this is the second part in a series of building the shaker table. Last time we worked on selecting the lumber, milling the lumber, and getting it dimensioned correctly, doing all the joinery, making the top. This time we're going to work on the surface preparation. We're going to do a glue up, uh, we're going to cut the top to size, and then we're going to put this all together. So stick around and we'll get this project complete. I've got my planning spot here on my table and I just want to go around the piece. I just want to get rid of the machine marks. Um, I will still hit this with probably 220 grit sandpaper afterwards, but just a light pass to get those nice and smooth. And I'll just keep going around the piece until I get that all done. I'm just taking my block plane here, and these edges are pretty sharp. I want to get rid of that. I don't want to touch any of the edges that are actually going to be part of the joinery, though. So, I don't know, five, six, ten swipes, something like that. I just want to knock that corner off so it's not sharp anymore. And that's it. That's all it takes. And while I've got all the sharp corners taken off, I also want to bevel the bottom of these feet because if they get moved across, let's say, a, a hardwood floor, there is a chance, it's kind of remote, but there is a chance that these things will chip out. So I'm going to do the same thing with my block plane here. It doesn't have to be too drastic. Give me a sixteenth of an inch. I'm getting ready to glue up the back legs. And uh, I can tell this by the triangle I drew before. So I'm going to take those and go like this. This is where I'm going to be putting the dowels. So before I prep these boards, I put T and the face, reminding me which is the reference face and which is the top. So this will actually go in there like that once I get it done. So the first thing I need to do is put some glue in these holes. And put these dowels in. I don't know if you heard the difference in sound when they bottom out. Right there. And this goes in here like this. And I've got a piece of wood here I'm going to put on top and I'm going to take my dead blow hammer and just knock it home. Well, here's the tabletop. I've got it nice and smooth now. And um, it's 21 inches wide by 23 something. It doesn't really matter. So I want the tabletop to be 20 and a half inches wide. So I don't want to take off a half inch on one side and ruin the pattern here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a quarter inch off this side, and then a quarter inch off this side. And I'm just going to do that at the table saw. So now I've got a 20 and a half. I know these two sides are parallel. Now I have to cut at least one square edge right here. And I'm going to get out my uh, large sliding crosscut sled for that. Now that I've got a square edge here to this reference face, I'm actually going to flip this over because I always want to be cutting on the same reference face. This is the back. So I just want to measure 20 and a half, and I'm just going to draw a mark right here. And I'm going to put that up against the kerf, the kerf line of my jig, I should say. And 
I'll be really, really, really close to 20 and a half inches, and that's going to be good enough for me. So I've got that cut at 20 and a half, and I've, I've checked it for square, and it's, it's really, really nice and square, which is cool. Uh, so the next thing I need to do is I'm going to take over the router table, and I'm going to put a bullnose edge all the way around this. Well, I made a test cut with my router, and this is the profile I'm looking for. I don't want a complete round over, but I just want a bullnose, which is a slight curve on both top and bottom. I've got a three-quarter inch radius router bit set up on my router table and my fence adjusted accordingly. I'm just going to push this through and I'm going to do the edge end grain first. Well, that's the profile I was looking for, so I just need to go over and do some final sanding work, especially on the end grain, uh, which is going to take me a little bit of time. And then once I do that, I'll start to work on the top and, and get that all nice and ready for finish. All right, well, I've got the top sanded down to 320. Uh, I really prefer to power sand my tabletops. It's the first thing people go to touch, and I want to make sure that my surface is absolutely perfect and smooth, which this is. I just need to clean it off, get any dust that's on there, and this will be ready for finish. Well, the piece is out of the clamps, or I should say the base is out of the clamps, and uh, I spent a few minutes with some 220 grit sandpaper, just going over the entire piece. There's some water and some of that high glue got on there. It sands off real easy, which is nice. and doesn't affect the finish. Anyways, this is the last chance for me to take a good look at every facet and face on the piece to make sure there's no defects or anything that needs to be fixed before I start doing the finish. I'm going to start finishing and I've already done the underside of this. I'm using Armor Seal uh, and first coat I want to flood the surface, get a good coating on there. The wood's going to be very thirsty and it's really going to drink it up. I'm going to let this sit for a couple minutes and I'm going to come back and wipe it down with another cloth just to pick up any excess. I doubt if there will be any because, it, like I said, the wood is very thirsty on this first coat. Well, here's the piece with the first coat of finish on it. I'm going to let this sit overnight before I do anything more to it. I end up putting four coats of the armor seal on here, and I've got a real nice flat finish. Um, I did sand in between the last two coats with 600 grit very lightly with the grain and wiped off any dust. I just want to get any dust nibs that might have been on there. So for the last step, I'm going to be using paste wax, and this is a dark brown paste wax. I've been putting it on with a uh, piece of steel wool. And I just want to put this on here and rub this in a circular motion. Make sure I get all the way to the edge. And this will give me a nice satin look. And it will also fill in all the little pores that are there from the you know, walnut being an open grain wood. Well, I've given this about 10 minutes or so to dry. And I'm just wiping off the excess now. And you can go you know, in a circular motion. The last pass you always want to do is with the grain. And you want to get all the excess off. And this takes a little bit of effort. But you got to make sure you get it all off. Well, after I'm pretty sure I've got all of it off, I just want to give it a couple more swipes with the grain. And one thing I found with this Brie Wax, I've been using it for a number of years, is that you have to still let it sit for a little bit to off gas because it's got a pretty strong smell to it. I usually let it sit for three or four days before I put it in the house. But I'm going to let it sit before, for at least 24 hours before I even touch this again. Well, after I got rid of all the excess wax on the table, 
Uh, I did go over it very, very lightly with some steel wool again just to make sure I got it all. And what I'm left with is a really, really super nice glass smooth surface. I don't know if you can see it on the camera here, but it's a very even sheen. It's a nice satin finish and uh, it's perfect for this tabletop. Well, I've got all the finishing done. I've got to start working on attaching the top to the base itself. And it's really easy. I'm going to be using these. They're called figure eights. It's basically like a double washer. And uh, you screw one side into the base, the other side of the table. And if the tabletop expands and contracts, it can move around a little bit. Very easy item to put in. Um, so what I'm going to do is I've got a combination square set up. It's 3 sixteenths of an inch in, which is about where I want that hole. So I'm just going to butt this up into that corner, take a scratch all, and just make a mark. I'm just going to do that around the rest of the table, and then I'm take a three-quarter inch bit and drill a little recess for this to sit in. I've got the piece turned upside down and uh, I'm about an inch, give or take, all the way around. It's centered. It's centered well enough for me. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be pretty close. So now I've got that done, I can go and mark the location of where the holes are going to go for the figure eights that attach to the tabletop. Well, that's it. The project is complete and it came out beautiful. Uh, I made this for my second oldest daughter. I know she's going to be very, very happy with it. Uh, I hope you had as much fun watching as I had making this table. Very easy project. Again, just a, a great design and came out really, really well. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below. And as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.